Hi, today I would like to show you how uh, a simple kind of a teapot is made. I'm going to be doing a teapot with a spout, lid, um, an overhead handle. The teapot body is going to be thrown as well as the spout and the lid. Um, the handle could be thrown, although I'll probably just make a normal um, kind of a, a, a strap handle with, with a flattened coil. Now, there are two different types of lids that I want to show you. One is a lid which is thrown upside down, basically, like a little bowl. There is a little gallery that is in the teapot itself. And then the lip of the lid fits in the gallery, and there is a flange that protrudes down into the teapot. Note that the area where the lid and the teapot are meeting are unglazed because we will fire it together. The other type of lid, as you can see here on this one, this one is thrown upright um, with just a flat bottom. It has a little flange that sticks out and this drops down in instead of sticking up um, and having a hollow bottom. This one is more of a, it, a solid or it could be trimmed right here too, but this one drops down in so it has a little bit more of a lower center of gravity. Um, both the spouts are going to be thrown in a similar manner. The teapot are thrown in a similar manner. This one you can see just is um, squatter, uh, less upright, um, and then the, the handles are made in a similar manner uh, on both of these. So let's get started and I'll show you how we do this. Alrighty, so I'm starting with a wedged piece of clay which is a, a right around three-ish pounds and uh, I'm just going to go ahead and center this. Now, I have centered and I've opened the wall, and you can see that I have uh, put in a, a flat bottom with a corner down here, and now I'm going to throw it cylindrically to uh, form a cylinder. Now, I have to decide early on when throwing. I need to make sure that I don't thin the rim out too much. If I want to establish a gallery on the pot which will hold the lid you just don't want to thin that rim too much because you need to have enough thickness where you can adapt that rim to form the gallery okay now that I have the cylinder pulled now I'm going to begin to shape this. Now I am going to try to keep the opening narrow because I uh, want to have the lid narrow, but I'm going to belly out the wall. And the teapot that I'm making is probably going to be slightly smaller than the textured one that I showed you at the beginning of the video. There we go. So remember, you form it into a cylinder first, and then you shape your cylinder. Now, to make the gallery here, I'm going to create a little bit of a recess. Let me grab this teapot. I'll show you. So I'm going to create an indent right here. It's a little bit lower. Um, this is pretty smooth on the inside, but the indent right there I'm going to create. Um, before I do that, I am going to just get, I've got some stuff down in the bottom. I just wanted to clean that up a little bit. Okay. <laughs> Okay, now to create that gallery, I want to make sure that this is absolutely even. And right now, it has a little bit of an off-center 
quality to it, so I want to trim this. Okay. Now that the opening looks a little bit more even, now I'm going to just come in here. And you could use your finger, you could use a wooden tool. I'm just going to create the recess with the corner of a wooden tool. It doesn't need to be that low, but the lid is going to fit right down in there. Alright, so there's a gallery on my teapot. I'm going to lift this shoulder just a little bit. There we go. And I think I'm I think I'm okay with that. Okay. So now this teapot I'm gonna leave on the bat, but I am gonna cut it free. My clay is just soft enough, I really don't want to uh, attempt to lift it up and try to warp it or anything. While I'm thinking about it, I wanted to show you this uh, product that I've been using. It's called a Batmate. It's by the uh, the the company, and honestly, I don't know how you pronounce it. If it's Xiam, it's like X I E M Studio Tools, and the Batmate is just a brilliant little uh, tool that they've come out with. Um, I don't know what it's made of, but it's some sort of uh, floppy material when you get it wet but when it's um, still dry it's rather um, it, it's really stiff it's brilliant though because it keeps your bat from wiggling around okay so now that I've thrown the teapot body now I'm going to throw uh, a couple of lids and a spout or two So what I'm doing here is I'm doing a technique that's called throwing off the hump where you do not uh, use the entire piece of clay for whatever it is that you're making. You basically center the top portion and throw something smaller. It's nice if you're making a whole bunch of repeated forms that are smallish. Um, a lot of people might throw, like a Japanese potter, might throw a whole bunch of tea bowls that are uh, small uh, off the hump. I throw my minis. If you uh, happen to see my one video that I did where I was making miniatures, I throw the minis off the hump. So this is going to be the start of a spout. I'm probably going to do two because usually I don't like one. So, you can see that you throw it into a cylinder first and then you bring it in, but unfortunately I'm getting some compression marks. I had a, an air bubble in my wall down there I could feel, so that was not good. To me, one of the things that I look for when I am throwing a spout is I want to get that uh, internal corner of the spout to be a pretty sharp corner. When it's a sharp corner like that, I find that it will cut the flow of the tea a little bit better and it will dribble, dribble a little bit less. Um, I'm sure there are a lot of people who make a ton of teapots who would have some opinions on that. but. Um, that's one one of the things that I concentrate on. So I'm just going to make a couple of spouts until I have one that is clearly one that I like better than the others. One thing that I'm going to do on this one is I'm going to pull it 
and get it a little bit off center and then bend it back. So I'm just trying to get a slight up, kind of an up tilt to it. So if you can imagine, this is the top of the spout, this is the bottom of the spout. It's something kind of fun to try, just a little bit different. Now you can see it's off center when I turn that. Okay, and note that I uh, am cutting a hole all the way through the bottom. And then hopefully one of those spouts will work. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do one or two lids here. So I wanna show you on the pot. Uh, one of the things that I'm going to be looking for is I want to measure two things. I want to measure the interior of the hole and then the uh, interior edge of the gallery. So let's start with the interior of the hole. Okay, these are double-ended calipers. I like these because I can measure the hole with one end and then this end will show me how big the flange will need to be inside of it. So. As I show you right here, I'm going to measure this, okay, with with the um, the end that hooks out, and then I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to throw my flange so it will stick up within the opening of the opposite end. All right, so I'm going to throw this kind of upside down, almost as if it's a little bowl. And this is going to be my flange area. I'm going to kind of split the wall with my thumb, and that then cause the clay to be where I need the flange. So I kind of pull up the flange, and then the other, oops, just dinged it with my finger. That was an accident. Let's remeasure that. Okay. Now the other measurement that I need to measure is going to be the gallery itself. I need to measure how big the flange is. So as I look here, I'm going to use that to measure the internal gallery and then the lip of the lid will need to go out and fit with that. So right now it's just a little bit bigger than I need it to be. I'm going to push that in a little bit, compress that rim. And there we go. It's just a smidge bigger, but I'm going to go with that right now because I'd like for that to be just a little bit larger than I need it to be. Now when I cut this off, I want to be careful not to cut um, you know, through that bottom, so I'm going to go a little lower than I think I might need to. I'm going to cut almost all the way through, but I'm going to leave it attached right in the center, and then I'm going to do another cut just below that. And this is just like when I make the minis. I refer to this as uh, you're making a clay bat. So my upper cut, about an eighth of an inch above it, that was the cut where the bottom of the lid will be, and then that little clay bat is so when I lift it up and take it off the a hunk of clay, I don't mess it up terribly. Now, of course, you could uh, just throw this right on the bat and not lift it off the bat. But again, I'm trying to conserve a little time and energy. Okay, now the second kind of lid that I want, that I want to do I am going to attempt to do um, an upright lid, one where it's right side up. And for this, I'm going to first measure that interior of the hole again. So I need to have my clay skinny enough that it would fit in the inside of the hole of the teapot. Okay, so let's hold this up. Ooh, that will just barely fit. Let's push in a little bit more. 
There we go. Okay, so that looks like that will be able to drop down in the teapot. Now, next th thing that I want to do is I want to take and I want to push up some clay, and hopefully I left enough clay here for creating a knob. Make sure I have enough water that I'm not sticking. And I really want to give an undercut to this knob so when I go to pick it up, it will not slip easily out of my fingers. Okay. And then lastly, all right, I'm going to straighten that back up again so it still fits. It got a little skinny. I mean, it got a little fatter than I intended it to be. So it needs to be able to fit and drop down in the teapot just barely. Okay. Now, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to measure the gallery again, that inside diameter of the gallery. So this is the wider of the two. And then I'm just going to take the edge or the rim of the lid, I'm going to thin it, and then I'm going to make it go horizontal. Because this will be the part of the lid that will actually sit on the gallery. This is the lip of the lid that will sit right on the gallery of the pot. Okay, and I went just a little bit bigger than I needed to, but that's okay. I can always trim it to be exact when I'm trimming. And there we go. Okay, and then this one, uh, again, this was thrown upright, so this one I'm just going to... Uh, I, you know what, I think I might just leave this one on the bat since it's my very last one. I'm just going to leave it here on the bat. So now I have two different spout possibilities and I have two different lid possibilities. Um, this kind of lid and then the other kind of lid which is the one that I threw uh, like this. So it was upside down like a little bowl with a split rim. So um, I'll let these things get leather hard and then I'll come back and I'll show you how I trim them. And here I'm going to be using my Giffen grip to hold the upside down teapot in place. I'm using the arms um, to uh, hold it. I mark the placement of my foot. Uh, here I'm checking it for level, which it is not level. Um, and I have to just pick it back up and put it back on until it is level. And when you begin trimming, remember, just like with anything, you go straight down from the bottom of the foot to establish it. All right. And uh, once you have um, uh, defined the exterior of the foot, you've ribbed, you have the outside looking pretty clean, then you're ready to move to the interior of the foot. And remember, straight down from the bottom. Okay, here is my trimmed teapot. There is a bit of a line there. I think I might uh, go to some shorter arms on my Giffen grip. To help get rid of the line, or maybe I'll just reverse the uh, the sliders. I'll just do this. Okay, now that I have the foot of the teapot trimmed, now we can address the lids. So this is the lid that I made last night and it is the one where it was made upside down like a bowl and it will fit into the gallery like that. Now what I need to do on this lid is I need to trim this away and then I'll put a knob on. Now you can trim it with it just on uh, a bat or on the Giffen grip itself but I am going to put it on the um, I'll put it on the teapot and I'll hold it in place with the Giffen grip and the nice thing about putting it directly on the teapot is it really 
will help to keep it nice and secure and you usually don't end up by damaging anything. So, I'm trimming a lid and I'm going to install a knob or I'm going to attach a knob, not install. I'm going to attach a knob like I did on to this lid and I'm just going to use some of the clay that I just trimmed off because I know it's going to be the same moisture. It's uh, a little bit more plastic than leather hard. So I'm just going to kind of slip and score and attach that onto here. Now with the ball attached, I'm going to smooth the outside of it with kind of the back of my nail. I'm using a small amount of water as I feel like I can get away with. Okay, now when I added the water to throw the little knob on there, I was careful not to allow the water to run down in there. Uh, I don't want to get my lid stuck. So that is one style of lid and how I would finish that off. Now the other style of lid, probably shouldn't have touched that there, the other style of lid was the other one that I threw last night as well. And that was this style where it drops down in there. Now, looks like it's not exactly dropping down in there. I'm going to have to trim some of that off. So I'll flip this upside down. At least that looks like it's fitting well. It does appear, though, that the part where I'd trimmed it away has a bit of a flange sticking out. So I need to just trim this off straight. And this part right here. I just need to tidy this up. Okay, so that looks okay. This is kind of sticking up at an angle that's a little higher than I would really care for it to be. So I'm just going to kind of push the angle of the lid downward some. It's still plastic it up enough that I can do this without. That gives you an idea. Okay, so that's my second lid. Now the spout, we can take a look at the two spouts that I have here. I have the one where I had curved it a little bit and one that is absolutely straight. So this one, I think this is the absolutely straight one and this is the one where I had curved it a little bit. Um, as I look at these, I'm thinking this one is probably just entirely too short. The idea behind um, a spout is that we usually cut it at an angle so it can angle upward. You always want to be very cautious of the angle at which you attach a spout because if it is not angled enough, okay, if the tip of your spout is not high enough, like if the spout were down here, uh, liquid would dribble out. So you always have to have it angled upward. Let me just grab this teapot and I'll show you. So when you, when you can see this, the bottom of the opening determines the highest level that your liquid can be on the interior. So we always want the bottom of the opening to be sufficient to have your teapot full of tea. So I'm going to uh, take my Giffen Grip off of here and I'm going to put a board on here so uh, it's a little bit easier to 
kind of see and manage. Okay. Now I'm going to mark this spout just to see how this will look. If I mark it and I hold the teapot behind it, I can get a sense of what the real contour of the teapot is. So this teapot has more of a rounded belly and it would need to come out a little bit more than what I initially drew. So kind of like installing, or again installing, it's kind of like attaching a handle on a cup. I hold the handle behind the profile of the cup, just like I hold the spout behind the profile of the teapot, so I can visually see, well, what's it going to look like when I hide certain portions of it. All right. So I'm going to hold this up. Okay. You can kind of get a sense of what I'm talking about here. I wouldn't want it to be down like that. Tea would dribble out. Um, I want it to be up high enough so the highest level of tea will not just start uh, dribbling out. So when I have the placement that I like, I'm going to mark it. Okay, and then I am going to take my knife and I'm going to try to cut this angle on the interior of the spout to match the contour of the pot itself. I don't want to have a weird angle. I want it to mesh nice and, and gently there. Now note that I am making a spout where it has a very large hole. Some potters like to make spouts where they have um, uh, just uh, holes in here like a strainer. If you want to do that, uh, you just have to be very cautious of the glaze. Um, sometimes you have to put a little bit of wax over that. I do not make a strainer in my teapot because I, quite frankly, when I use loose tea, I just use a tea ball. But most of the time I use tea bags, which probably most tea uh, enthusiasts would scoff at that. But honestly, I'm more of a coffee person anyway. All right, so I uh, marked my outside of where the spout's gonna go, and then I trim away the hole on the inside. Now, obviously you have to trim it, leaving plenty of uh, a shoulder there to which you can attach the um, spout. Okay. So now I've got a scoring tool. I'm going to generously score both the spout and the pot because uh, you really want this attachment to be secure. And I'm sure this goes without saying, anyone who is advanced enough to, to be making a teapot knows that your clay has to be really of similar or same moisture when you are attaching these because if you have one part that is drier than the other they will shrink and crack uh, as they are drying. You always want things to dry together so they shrink uniformly. Now I have one half with slip on it. Both sides were scored Okay, I hold that there and you can kind of see what I'm doing for that. Now I'm going to just gently push that inward. I like to have my finger on the inside of the pot. I want to make sure that I'm not uh, messing up the pot. I'm not making the pot cave in or anything like that. I'm going to come in here with some slip and seal that. Okay. And on the interior, kind of hard to get a paintbrush in there, but I'm going to just take my finger and try to blend the inside of the spout as much as I possibly can. It's nice to seal that sort of stuff uh, on the inside so you don't have, um, oh maybe, places where, uh, you know, tea could catch and, and get stuck in there. I do have some loose debris in there I'll shake out. Okay, now this is one uh, fine way that you can do a uh, teapot spot. You can also blend it a little bit if you I'm want just... to have a little bit of a smoother transition, you certainly can. I'm just going to blend this a little bit. 
after I have it blended, I'm going to go back over it with my wet brush, creating some slip, smoothing out my tool marks. Okay, now I'm going to set it on its side to kind of give it the, the arch that I would like it to have. Okay, now I have the angle approximately the way that I need it. I anticipate that I'm going to be attaching the handle here and here on the teapot, and I need to allow it to get stiff. Um, I could let it sit on this uh, canvas covered board for an hour or so. Um, I'm just going to kind of speed it along with my heat gun. Alright, I've dried my teapot handle and it's close to the same leather hard state as the pot itself. So I'm going to figure out where I want it. I'm going to have the handle in line with the spout. I'll set my lid to the side for the moment. Okay, And then I want to think about the length of the handle. I'm going to start off by trimming some ends. And we'll see how this looks. If I trim something like this, that's a real nice, long, elegant handle. If I'd rather go for something that has a little less flare and flourish, I'll just go with uh, something a wee bit on the shorter side. It has a little bit more of a functional quality to it. You always have to uh, account for the ease of getting your handle on and off, making sure that you're not, uh, you know, making the handle area so small that you cannot get your uh, hand, uh, your knob in there easily. Now obviously there are handles that would uh, also go on the back side. That is another valid way to do a handle. I just wanted to show you how to do the overhead handle. I like the look of it. It's Go to place again. I want to make sure that I'm in alignment with the spout, that it's not off kilter, that it's not leaning, that it looks the way I want it to look. I'm going to firmly press the ends on, and I think I might even take a little extra coil, and I could use a little coiling around it. Now with the little coils placed in here, I'm just going to blend the little coils to kind of ease that transition, give it a little bit more of a, a sturdy hold on the pot. So here's a little trick for uh, getting a lid off when you have a knob that's still wet. If you put a strip of paper towel in there, you can uh, pick the lid up with that and it will uh, protect your knob and not damage it. So at this point, um, if, if my handle were really saggy and I were worried that it, it wouldn't be able to withstand uh, gravity. I could always take a dry sponge and kind of prop it up in there, but I'm actually okay with the contour that I'm getting here. And I'm going to allow it to uh, stiffen up overnight 
so it all becomes the same moisture and then uh, I'll, I'll check on it tomorrow if I need to do any final last things I'll sign it and everything and then allow it to dry very very slowly so that is how you make a teapot if you're interested in how I did the texture on the Shino teapot uh, please see one of my other videos that I have on, I believe it's called Texturing the Shallow Plate Bowl, how to add a texture to a shallow plate bowl. I, I will put a link here uh, right in the video that you can click if you would like, um, or you can look in the comments, um, the description of the video, and you can find that. Thanks!